which is on zoonotic disease on small animals uh, with one health uh, approach. So as an introduction, uh, I have you know, these pointers. Maybe uh, if we look at you know, the number of the, the dog and the cat uh, in Ethiopia, uh, it says that we have around you know, 5 million dogs and one, uh, 150,000 you know, cats. And normally in Ethiopia, we kept you know, these animals uh, for different purposes. Uh, we keep you know, for different purposes. Uh, so keeping you know, such kind of uh, animals may have you know, a role for, uh, especially for zoonotic you know, diseases. Uh, maybe as you know, as you all know, the zoonotic diseases, uh, which are you not know, transmitted from animal to humans, almost you now 60% of those uh, all infectious these are uh, are zoonotic and the majority of you know almost 75% of them are uh, emerging in you know, pathogens so as i said you know before we kept you know these animals for uh, different purpose and they 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 become you know a transmitter you know, for many zoonotic you know, diseases that can be a virus or that can be a bacteria or a protozoa uh, for example, if we look at you know, the most uh, common uh, zoonotic you know, diseases uh, from the pet, like you know, rabies, leptospira, brucella, uh, toxoplasma, ringworm, and echinococcus are you know, some of you know, the diseases which are you know, zoonotic. Uh, so how is you know, the method of you know, transmission uh, between animals and humans, between animal and humans? Uh, so a direct you know, contact between the household uh, pet and the people, uh, maybe by uh, petting, that is, you know, by kissing or licking, or it might be the transmission could be indirectly through the contamination of uh, the food uh, or maybe from the environment. So transmission can be possible either directly or uh, indirectly. But the most common one, uh, especially for uh, bacterial uh, skin you no know, uh, uh, infectionist bites are you know, the most you know, common. And another one is uh, since the animal and the humans have you know, frequent you know, contact with uh, uh, frequent contact you know, with the microbiota which is you know, presenting in the skin that can also be considered as a source of uh, infection you know, for transmission. And another one is even you know, the vectors like the flies can have also a role you know, for transmission. Uh, especially for uh, Leishmania or the Calazars, which is you know, transmitted you know, by flies, like you know, flies. So with that, you know, let's have a look at you know, the burden of you know, such diseases, uh, specifically in Ethiopia. How is you know, the burden? So my intention is more of, I will present, you know, uh, I will present uh, uh, the prevalence. Dr. Daniel you no know, present you know, before. Each year we have you know, almost uh, 3,000 you know, people are dying uh, uh, from rabies you know, in Ethiopia, so which is you know, one of you know, the highest rabies days rate in the world. And if we look, you know, one is uh, the people are getting uh, 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 beaten by the rabid you know, dogs. If we look at the post exposure uh, accessibility, only it is in few places it is accessible. Otherwise, in the majority of you know, the area, there is you no know, any accessibility for post exposure you know, prophylaxis. And even people, uh, most people do not have you know, uh, good awareness uh, to go to, uh, to the hospital uh, after they get uh, beaten by uh, the dogs. So generally the people uh, awareness is uh, very low. So uh, let's have a look at how is uh, the prevalence of uh, the dog mediated norevis in Ethiopia. This is uh, a systematic review and meta-analysis. So in short, uh, it's almost you know, 72 uh, uh, percent of you know, prevalence, which is really endemic uh, in Ethiopia. So these are you know, the various you know, study uh, that indicating you know, the prevalence of dog mediated you know, uh, rabies. So the overall you know, the pool prevalence is indicating you know, 32 prevalence, which is really endemic and still affecting uh, the animal and the human beings as well. So the other most important one is uh, the canine leptospara and the brucella. So as you see, uh, how is you know, the burden? So uh, the overall prevalence of the Brucella, for example, is around 50%. Uh, whereas for the Leptospara species is uh, almost you know, 4%. Uh, 
So really, it's also endemic. Both of them are presenting. This is you know, an indication of the zero uh, prevalence uh, study. So maybe uh, this leptospora and uh, uh, brucella infection is uh, really high in Ethiopia. So we need to think you know, a possible you know, ways for the control of you know, such diseases. So another one is uh, the toxoplasma. The toxoplasma in animal and in human is also highly endemic in Ethiopia. If we just you know, directly look at you know, the prevalence uh, of uh, toxoplasma gondii in human in Ethiopia is really very high, up to 41% you know, percent, uh, especially for those you know, children less than one, uh, less than five years are highly seropo uh, seropositive you know, for uh, such you know, protozoa. And uh, if, we, if we remember toxoplasma, uh, uh, having you know, toxoplasma is really a threat for uh, especially those people who are immunocompromised having a child infection or having any another concurrent infections. So the other one is uh, the leishmania. So if we look at you know, the prevalence of uh, the leishmania infection in Ethiopia, it's almost uh, uh, 92 uh, percent. That's also a zero prevalence you know, study, which was you know, contact, uh, conducted in West uh, Shoa zone. So still, it is uh, also leishmania is also present in, in Ethiopia uh, with high endemic. I, I hope you all know leishmania. That is called you nocalazar. Know, it has you no know, two forms uh, in in human beings. Uh, the cutaneous and the visceral uh, forms, which is you know, transmitted you know, mainly by uh, the sand of flies. But especially the canine you leishmaniasis know, is you know, the most uh, commonly uh, ignored uh, or the most commonly uh, neglected you know, disease uh, as well. So therefore, uh, awareness of the people, how it is transmitted is really uh, very important. So the other, one, the other, the last one is the echinococcus. Uh, I hope you all know also echinococcus, which is a parasitic disease caused by the tapeworm of the genus echinococcus. And even this is also a zoonotic disease and it has you know, two forms. The cystic uh, echinococcus, the, that is you know, the high diatidosis, mainly affecting you know, the liver. And the other one is the echinococcus, which is you know, mainly uh, affecting you know, the, uh, in, the, in the lung, that is you know, the alveolar one. So humans you know, can get uh, be infected by the ingestion of you know, the parasite, eggs in the contaminated food or in the water, or it could be in the soil. So humans can easily get you know, uh, uh, infection with that. So I have tried to look you know, whether it is also present in Ethiopia. Uh, I, have, uh, I, have, I have gotten you know, one study which was you know, conducted in Bardar, the human high diatidosis. So almost, uh, 36 you know, th thousands of you know, patients were uh, ad were admitted in the hospital and examined you know, for ultrasound you know, examinations, and almost uh, 24 high diatidosis cases was uh, registered. So we have also uh, high diatidosis in in the human as well. So with that, what could be the possible you know, solutions you know, to combat uh, those you know, zoonotic diseases? So uh, what I'm thinking is that the best solution is uh, the one health approach, thinking in a one health approach, as you all know, one health approach is uh, there are you no know, multidiscipline, it is a multidisciplinary approach. There are you no know, different you know, professions are involved you know, there, uh, the, mainly the human, the animals, and the environment. So, with that you no know, approaches, it would be nice uh, to solve you know, zoonotic diseases. Otherwise, we cannot, uh, we cannot reduce you know, the prevalence or the incidence of uh, those zoonotic you know, diseases without you know, these uh, approaches. So we have to think you know, uh, a one health approach uh, to reduce. And so what would be the take home message? So what I'm thinking is that uh, we have to establish uh, the one health initiative that aimed you know, to work uh, on the pet animals. Uh, with that, we can address the issue. And another, uh, another one is uh, strengthening uh, the Ethiopian Small An uh, Animal Veterinary Association also uh, another area. And uh, maybe it's not common in our country, but uh, especially in the Western is really very common. There are many uh, animal you know, activists. So even we have, uh, even especially in Africa or it could be in Ethiopia, we need to have uh, an, an animal activists who care you know, for animal you know, welfare as well. Therefore, advocating about the welfare of uh, the pet animal is also very important you know, for that. And another one is we need to also improve you know, the awareness of you know, the pet owner 
because as I said in a before, pet owners, uh, their awareness about the onotic and uh, the feeding you know, practice you know, they have is really very low. So we need to uh, make you know, an awareness about that. And finally, education is really uh, very important, you know, which has to be uh, uh, conducted either by physicians or by veterinarians or, or any other uh, one health you know, professionals. With that, I would like to say, you know, thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to me. So I finish, you know, my part.